Now, instead of doing a review for this device, since it's technically not available in the States yet, uh, I figured I would do kind of a throwback video. So, a while ago, I used to do these complete walkthrough videos where I would take every single unique feature I found about a device, whether that was a phone or a laptop or whatever, uh, and put it all into one video. Uh, so, fair warning, this is not going to be a short video, uh, but hopefully by the end of this video, if you watch the entire thing, you'll know everything that this device can do, and then maybe that'll help you make better decisions on whether you want to go buy it or not, or whatever it may be. So, without further ado, let's do a complete walkthrough of the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. First up, let's talk about the hardware. The device is made out of aluminum and glass. Now, it doesn't have Qi wireless charging, which is the usual reason for phones lately going with glass backs. Instead, though, this was done entirely for aesthetic reasons. It also comes in four colors, midnight blue, titanium gray, pink gold, and mocha brown, which is the one that I have here. We have a volume rocker and the power button on one side, a SIM card micro SD card slot on the other, a speaker and USB-C port at the bottom, and a rarity nowadays at the top an IR or infrared blaster. Now you can use this IR blaster to cause delightful havoc in sports bars by changing the channels or turning up and down the volume, etc. Uh, good times. But if you want more info on that feature, I did a video on this a long time ago uh, and how it works, etc. And it's very similar here on the Mate 10 Pro. So if you're curious, go ahead, click the link below and check that out. On the front of the device, we have an 18 by nine, that's two by one, six inch AMOLED screen with a 2160 by 1080 resolution that is also capable of HDR10, AKA 10 bit color depth for better dynamic range from content that is HDR capable. Above the screen, we have an eight megapixel F 2.0 aperture front facing camera. Around back, we have a 20 megapixel F 1.6 aperture monochrome camera that captures details in black and white, and a 60 megapixel F 1.6 aperture RGB camera that captures in color, both designed by Leica, the popular camera company if you don't know. The idea being that the device uses both of these together and some clever software to produce images with a lot more data than just one camera. Along with this though, the device has some really interesting software that uses AI to improve these further, but we'll get to that shortly. Under that, there is a fingerprint sensor used to unlock the device. Powering all of this is Huawei's latest Kirin 970 with an octa-core processor, a 12-core GPU, and an NPU, which is a term you're gonna hear more and more, I imagine. The NPU is a neural processing unit and is a chip designed to handle machine learning processes better than a CPU or a GPU can. It means that AI-related tasks are performed by the NPU at a faster and more efficient rate, and this frees up the CPU and GPU to handle their computations and graphics like they were better designed to do. Now this is paired with six gigs of RAM and the choice between a 64 gig and a 128 gig storage model. And the whole thing is powered by a 4,000 milliamp battery with Huawei's fast charge that can charge the battery up to 50% in 30 minutes. And now keep in mind, that's 2000 milliamps in 30 minutes compared to 50% on other devices. Now it is of course running Android, which means that we can swap out any of the software we want from the home screen launcher to the camera, the email app, etc. But real quick, let's go through some of the software that Huawei has included on the device. First and foremost, we have EMUI 8.0, which is Huawei's latest iteration of their UI overlay that sits on top of Android. And compared to older versions of EMUI, it's been toned down and cleaned up, which I appreciate. You have your normal home screen and widgets, but also have the option to customize things a bit further with themes and transitions for when swiping. And we also have access to Google Now cards at the far left instead of some proprietary news feed, et cetera, like we've seen with some other OEMs. Pulling down from the top of the device gives us our notification shade as normal and some customizable shortcuts like usual with the addition of a screen recorder, Huawei Share that allows you to share easier with other Huawei devices, an eye comfort mode for reducing blue light, and a navigation dock which is an always overlaid dot on the screen that you can drag around to reposition. Idea being that you can remove the Android nav buttons using this entirely to get more screen real estate and just use this instead. You can tap it to go back, tap and hold to go home, tap and hold then slide left or right to bring up multitasking. Now swiping down on the home screen gives you search and suggestions made by the on-device AI. 
Going into settings gives you options to change the home screen layout grid, turn off the Google feed and app suggestions, choose what apps it can use for searching, disable badge app icons, and a couple other customization options as well. They've also added a few apps to the device, including their own music app, a backup app that you can use to back up your data to a computer, internal storage, SD card, or a USB storage, a file browser, a flashlight, health app, customer care app for support with the device, a mirror to use as a mirror, phone clone app to transfer data to or from another Android or iOS device, an audio recording app that has options to optimize for multiple speakers, two speakers or normal frequency recording, a phone management app that you can use to one tap optimize the storage, mobile data, battery, virus scanning, and handle blocked contacts, a SIM toolkit to handle the SIMs in this dual LTE capable SIM card slots that are available on some models, theme app that allows you to customize the lock screen style, home screen and lock screen wallpapers, and the icons as well, a weather app and Microsoft's custom built for Huawei's NPU translator app that translates text and voice a lot faster than the non-optimized versions thanks to the AI needed for the translation. Now in settings we have the normal fare with a few noteworthy additions. We have app twin mode that allows you to log in with two separate accounts into the same app, which is handy if you have say a business and personal WhatsApp, for example. A system-wide dark mode to save power since it is an AMOLED screen and anything black means the pixels are actually off. So this is how that kind of saves power. File safe mode that allows you to section off parts of your storage and encrypt them with a password to be accessed. App lock to fingerprint lock specific apps and private space, which allows you to actually create entirely sandbox versions of the UI with different apps, settings, accounts, etc. And that can actually be accessed by using a specific fingerprint. So your index finger might bring up one, your middle finger might bring up another, etc. Another feature worth mentioning that's unique is the ability to use any USB-C cable that supports a display port instead of a dock to use the device in a desktop mode that allows you to use your apps in a windowed format with a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. And finally, let's go through the camera. The camera app has the ability to do lossless two times zoom. It has a pro mode for controlling all of the camera settings you'd expect by swiping up in the arrow above the shutter button. A ton of options by sliding over to the right with the standouts being raw format in pro mode, watermarks, smile detection that will take a photo when someone smiles, object tracking that you can use to adjust focus automatically on an object or person as they move through the shot, and a quick snapshot mode that allows you to double press volume down to quickly take a photo or just launch the camera. Swiping the other way, we get the different modes that we can use with the more unique ones being monochrome for black and white photos, 3D panorama and normal panorama, light painting, which is this long exposure mode that people use to create those creative light trail photos maybe you've seen on the internet, and document scanning that can automatically outline a piece of paper and try to make it as close to a scan as possible. Above the viewfinder, we have access to our flash, a wide aperture mode that has the software judge the depth of a subject and allows you to adjust the amount of blur as well as adjust where the focus is after the fact in the photo gallery. A portrait mode that does something similar without the ability to adjust the focus and for some reason only works on humans. A moving picture option that takes a quick couple of seconds of video before and after the shot, similar to live photos if we're honest. And then we can of course rotate the camera to the front where we are limited to just flash, which is basically the screen going off in a white flash. Portrait moving picture mode, and a beauty mode for skin smoothing that is super creepy if we're honest. Now here are some sample shots with the front camera. And here are some with the rear. As for the video, it can shoot up to 4K with optical stabilization, but no electronic stabilization, or you can use lower resolutions and it'll do both. It can also use that same wide aperture mode and the creepy beauty mode for video as well. And there we go, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the Mate 10 Pro in the comments below and any of these features. Also, if I missed any features that you guys would like to add, please let those fly in the comments. Uh, also, I'd love to know what you guys think about this type of a video. Do you like these complete walkthroughs still? Is this something I should stop doing, do more of? Let me know. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, but if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel. Any of that is greatly appreciated. And as always, regardless, Thanks for watching.